Hello all my friends in the south. This is the weekly water outlook for September 8th. Now you know it's sort of been a little bit mixed over Texas. Um, I can't say it's been all dry and it certainly hasn't been wet. It's been a mix and I think this is what we see here on the number of rain days. We see a little bit of green which is indicating three or four days of rain but we see a much bigger area in brown and that's zero or one. Especially in Oklahoma and Kansas, um, near zero uh, rain, and we're going to talk about that in just a bit, about how uh, quiet or lack of rain over the last week in particular. And you can see that here over the last seven days. Look at this in Oklahoma. Hardly any rain anywhere in this area right here. And, you know, I always say that the um, amount of rain in blue is really not significant. That's only up to a half inch. Even green is not all that much during the warm season. So there was some po there were some pockets of rain over the eastern part of the state of Texas, but other than that, it was very quiet week as expected. Now, if we look at this, we can see very clearly this is the percent of normal for the last seven days. The area in red is well below normal. Kansas and Oklahoma, look at that. 5% of normal or less, and actually with no rain, it was zero. Then we get into the central and eastern part of Texas. This is really, looks like a summertime pattern where we have the blue, especially the purple. Uh, it's above normal precipitation and heavier pockets of rain, but it was really confined to a very small area. This is much more your convective, summertime convection, uh, very scattered. doesn't give you a widespread relief. Now, if you happen to be right under that, your former ranch, you're going to get some relief, but the vast majority of folks are going to remain dry. So the reason has been this ridge of high pressure. It's definitely a summertime type pattern. It's been drifting back and forth some, all summer long, actually. Sometimes it's been over this area in the west. Right now it's a bit further east. And temperatures have been very, very warm under the influence of this high. Now, the south, including Oklahoma and parts of Texas, is on the southern edge of that ridge. And it has been influenced by this most of the summer. And that's why we've been fairly dry over almost the entire south because in one way or the other we've been um, impacted by that ridge of high pressure. Now I put out some information on the um, tropics over the last couple weeks. I'm following it very closely. Hasn't been a lot to watch. I gave you some ideas that we might get a pickup in activity this time. There is one system moving off of Africa with a high probability of developing and uh, that's something to watch this week, but ending August, there were no named hurricanes. We're setting a, some records as far as the low number of hurricanes this season, so there's definitely something out there that's inhibiting uh, development. And, you know, sometimes we really don't know what that is. I know a lot of people speculate on this or that, um, and I've mentioned some of those things in the information I put out, but sometimes we just don't know. And that so far has been the season. But I also know there's some years that you sit here and you think it's never going to develop and it really lights up. So this will be a critical week. We're at the peak. And if this system here does not develop, um, I think we can pretty much say there's something that's inhibiting the season. It's getting so late anyway, most likely the numbers will be significantly lower than that outlook was earlier this season. Now, tropical weather is very tricky that we don't want a hurricane or tropic, strong tropical storm but tropical moisture can be very beneficial over parts of the South and Midwest. So I'll keep an eye on that and certainly let you know. Now right now, uh, the steering winds, uh, we have that area of high pressure over the middle part of the nation I just talked about. Winds are sort of moving in this direction and that's blocking pretty much um, the Gulf Coast, the upper North Gulf Coast at this time. Most likely track is around this area of high and curving and staying off well off the, the coast. Now this area of high pressure is going to be uh, breaking down and I think once it does it's going to sort of open up uh, much more potential for Gulf um, or even the East Coast at that time. But again right now there's not much out there to look at and even so if it would come in it's sort of hard to say exactly where it's going to go right now. So here's the drought monitor. I mentioned that patchwork. Remember early in the season, Oklahoma had a lot more rain over the eastern part of the state, and that's still out of the drought. But the rest of Texas is in some degree of drought. It ranges from uh, more of a moderate drought, and that's at light brown, 
But those areas of red are extreme drought. And we actually have a couple of areas of dark rain, uh, red, and that's exceptional drought. So all of Texas is in some degree of drought except the far west. And in some cases, it's in a very high uh, degree of drought. Now I wanna focus on a couple of these graphics. Let's just look at the top two. This is how drought has changed over the last week and over the last four weeks. And mainly I wanna look at four weeks. And this shows in green is where the drought has improved. Yellow is where it's remained steady. So this is saying that there has been some improvement late this summer over the western part of Texas, while over the eastern part of Texas, it's pretty much stayed the same. Over Kansas, this is that heavier rain, lots of green in here. So there has been some improvement over the last four weeks in that area. So generally speaking, on the recent trends have either been pretty much status quo or in some areas, including in the western part of Texas and parts of Kansas and northeast um, Oklahoma, some improvement over the last four weeks. Now this is where you can see the temperature deviation. I wanted to point out that the warmest temperatures as far as or the, the deviation, I should say, not necessarily the warmest temperatures, are going to be with that core of high pressure. And that's been in the upper Midwest late in August. Temperatures have been 6 degrees, 9 degrees or more above normal. But even in the south, you can see that it, they have been trending above normal, but not nearly as much so as if you'd be under the core of that high pressure. Okay, so let's talk about the jet stream here. Um, I have three different lines because the jet stream will be changing um, early this week, mid this week, and late this week. Early this week, we're going to continue in this blue area here, and we're going to be continuing under the area of high pressure. Middle of the week, we're going to sort of dig out a little bit of this trough, and that'll be bringing cooler air up into the northeast U.S. and central plains. And then next week, the jet stream's going to lift up towards the north. Now, I want to mention a little word about climatology. We're going to be transitioning sooner or later from summer into fall. Fall is a quiet time of the year. It's sort of between uh, two active periods, but it is a quiet time of the year. So with this jet lifting up to the north, I think the longer term trend as we get into September is going to be quiet and warm. Um, I just don't see a whole lot other than we get tropical activity. So here's the forecast for this week, the next seven days. Somewhat similar to last week. Very quiet, uh, no rain at all over Oklahoma for the week. No rain over northern Texas. Chances of tropical moisture over the Texas coast and far south Texas and uh, a generally pretty quiet week, including Arkansas and Louisiana. So with that high pressure dominating early this week and then no upper atmospheric energy, it looks like it'll be another quiet week. And I wanted to look a little bit further ahead through the rest of the month. I looked at some of NOAA's outlooks and generally right through the end of the month, it looks like temperatures will be remaining above normal and precipitation um, generally, I think trending below normal. And, but you can see here, one of the differences here is that the core of below normal precipitation is to our north and it could be a bit mixed and of course the big variable is if a tropical system would come through and that wouldn't be reflected on these outlooks at all. So the takeaway let's start off the week with the impact of that ridge continued dry and above normal temperatures the ridge will be diminishing midweek, but that's not going to have a whole lot of uh, impact over the south. And generally, I think the overall pattern right through September is quiet and trending on the warm side um, and dry right into late September. Thank you for listening to this week's briefing, and I will be talking to you again next week.